tonight's guest. She's got gall in a southern drawl. Fox Business Network anchor Dagan McDowell. He's written more scripts than a doctor at the ER. TV writer and producer Rob Long. She's the face of a generation. Excuse me, Jen. She's the face of Jen. Host of Sincerely Cat on Fox Nation, Cat Tim. He's as ripped as President Trump's scripts. My massive sidekick and host of Nuff Said, Fox Nation Tyrant. Dagan, Dagan, Dagan. Did you feel pity for the Dems this week? He, he had a great week. They had a terrible one. No pity. But when it comes to a loser, I prefer a sore loser. When you beat them, they have a total meltdown. It helps you savor the victory. It puts an exclamation point on it. And see, we were denied Hillary Clinton's meltdown because she hid after she lost to Donald Trump. Woods. So we've been waiting. We've been waiting for over three years yes. to watch, well, what Nancy Pelosi did at the State of the Union address. She was, she practically had a twitch in her face. She was yeah. like, and she was, bite, she was biting the inside of her mouth and then whammo, she just completely lost it and mm-hmm. it just drove home. Mm-hmm. The victory. Yeah. You know, Rob, I keep, I can't help but notice that the response to Trump never changes. It's like, oh, yeah. my God, he said right. this. I can't believe he said BS. Yeah. It's like they, they live in a world where they never hear these things. And coming from a president, how awful. It, it's been three or four years. Move on. Well, also, I mean, look, the guy's funny. <laughs> A yeah. friend of mine writes for one of those late night comedy shows, and he's uh, sort of a Trump s- uh, supporter. And he, they're all watching, all the writers are watching Trump give one of those speeches. And Trump's making a bunch of jokes, and he turns to his fellow comedy writers and says, yeah. oh, I mean, okay, come on. The guy's funny. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to like him to think he's funny. I mean, and I think that is ultimately is the problem for the Democrats, is that you have a bunch of people who don't like him. I mean, I don't like him, right? Yeah. But, I mean, I like 3% unemployment. Yes. <laughs> I like 200,000 new jobs. Yeah. I mean, I like that. I like, I like all the things he said in the State of the Union, which mm-hmm. are genuine successes that any president has a right to claim. Yeah. And he did it, and they just, what do they have? They have, well... Things are good, but we're mad as hell about it. Yeah, I mean, you raise the point. You don't have you. You don't have to like his words no. and like his deeds. It's it's. But saying this forever, that in fact there might be a correlation between his obnoxiousness and the success. Maybe. Has anybody thought about that? Americans didn't hire him to be their friend. No, they hired him to do the job. Yes, and he 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 did his like four year review performance review uh-huh. on Tuesday night. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I can't get a raise. But also, you know, Pat. <laughs> Pat. And it kills me to say it. I know. It kills me to say it. I'm the guy who said it wasn't going to work. It kills me to say it. <laughs> oh, well, but it's well, true. Pat, I was wrong. Hey, you, Pat, the weird thing about it, too, is that he was a an achiever on the Republican side, but he was a pretty good liberal president. Some of the things he was talking about were things that Democrats should have been applauding. Some of them transcended politics, period, right? right? So everybody has to agree that Donald Trump has said and done many things that anyone else that would have ended their political career a long time ago. And the Democrats don't get it. Yeah. They're running around being like, what? How is this possible? What is this sorcery? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know about sorcery, but I do know that a lot of it has to do with you guys. Yes. And I think a perfect example is the way they acted at the State of the Union. Yeah. It wasn't just the paper ripping. It was when he's talking about those things that do transcend politics, like low unemployment, like, oh, honoring events. Veteran, <laughs> but lawmakers are standing up and cheering, and they're sitting there like, mm. "Yeah, you Stupid know." Veteran. And a lot of right, exactly. <laughs> you risked your life for my freedom. <laughs> like, excuse me, yeah. you know. But that's but that's part of the reason why 
why Republicans have such an easy time saying, well, if you, you oppose them, it's just because of Trump, Trump derangement syndrome. Right. Because even if you do have a legitimate concern or a complaint about him or his presidency or his policies, people aren't going to take it as seriously because you've already proven you don't need a reason right. to be complaining and pissed off. And nah. No, that's an excellent point. Tyrus, what do you make of the week? Uh, well, <laughs> let's focus on the positives yes. for the Democrats because I was uh, sick all week. Mm -hmm. So I watched a lot of TV. And you have to wait a long time to get to the good stuff. So yeah. I watched a lot of Oh, coverage of the impeachment trial. And I watched a lot of the Iowa caucus stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember watching in the beginning when they were trying to form lines. Mm -hmm. Like, who, what group? Who's viable? Who's not viable? Yeah. And they had a little... And the nice, old, elderly lady who couldn't count the 127 people in the room. Yeah. And lined them up was in charge of an app. And I remember saying, I know it's just the cough medicine, <laughs> but she's going to screw this up. <laughs> they literally, I was like, no, they're, they're having an app. Yes. And whenever you have glasses with a chain on the end of it, <laughs> yeah. you are not supposed to be the person in charge of a new app. You're supposed to be at the library. So her account, and literally, and like, I saw one person moving. They went from Biden to Warren, and she was like, uh, nope, nope, we got to start over. Like, uh, <laughs> and then, then the best thing ever yeah. was an even older guy <laughs> comes over to help her look. And she's like, don't. He's like, no, I think it's 17. I think it's 24. And I'm like, they're going to mess this up. <laughs> yeah. Like, all of a sudden, I was tuned in. I had three TVs going because I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> and at one point, I fell asleep in my chair like this, and I went, oh, oh. they still messed it up. Oh, they couldn't count anything. No. What they need to do what? is get a big tent and put it in front of the camera at CNN and be like, under construction, Democrats, 2024, new things coming. Yes. See you then. <laughs> Take a bye. Take a bye. Yes, All right. All right. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's the Perino and Steyerwalt I'll Tell You What podcast. Dana Perino of The Five and Fox News political editor Chris Steyerwalt dissect the ins and outs of national politics. Subscribe and listen now by going to foxnewspodcasts.com. Does your animal fret when you call it a pet? PETA, the animal rights group, not the Finnish model I dated in the 90s, is offended by what you're saying. So you better stop. They want you to stop calling your animals pets and stop referring to yourself as an owner. A lot of people at home who have dogs and cats, they will call these animals um, their pets and they'll refer to themselves as owners. And this implies that the animals are a possession. Oh, you're stupid. Pretty sure if you ask a dog or cat, they tell you that they rule the house, not the human. At least that's what Jasper tells me. <laughs> So instead of calling them pets, Peter, Peter's preferred term is animal companions, which sounds sexy, because you and your animals are equals. And as such, you should be doing things with your animals as true equals. Kat, I know you're excited about this segment. Mm -hmm. Why? Because PETA is totally wrong. They're concerned that the word pet objectifies animals, mm -hmm. but they don't consider that there are some animals out there who might want to be objectified, okay? Mm -hmm. For example, my cat, Sheens, will not stop posting thirsty pictures on Instagram. Oh, Look at really? this one. The caption, look back at it, fire emoji. Next one. <laughs> this one. They what's this? They uh, hate to see me go, but they love to watch me leave. Peach emoji. Okay, uh, it's he's, he's out of control. This one th just thick. T uh, he <laughs> cannot stop posting very sexually suggestive uh, Instagram posts. He loves to be objectified, and I would rather have them advise me on what to do about this because it's hard to raise a cat in this um, hypersexualized culture. It's true. It's true. They, you know, cats, they grow up so fast. <laughs> Be before you know it, I don't know. You know what's worse, Dagan, than calling an animal a pet? How about calling it food? <laughs> Which, it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. 
There are dog meat farms all over. No, I just meant in general. Oh. It's, animals would prefer to be pets. Yes, no. indeed. I did an experiment before I came on the show. Uh huh. Animals don't care what you call them. Uh, yeah. I, I have a dog, Charlie, and I yell, I called him Zit. Mm hmm. Booger. Uh huh. And he still looked at me. It's the tone of your voice and the fact that I smell like food. Yes, smell like food. Tyrus, life is so great right now. I'm going to stop. I don't even need a question. Okay. Let's just wrap this up. <laughs> Humans understand the human language. <laughs> I could name my dog Jackass, and if I say it with a smile, come here, Jackass, he's going to come and he's going to love me. You know why? What? Because he doesn't know the human language. <laughs> yes. But what he figures out and be like, hey, what's with the Jackass? Sorry, man, I was trying to make a point. <laughs> when that day happens... I'll worry about it. Yes. Owner, pet, they don't give a damn thing to fill my bowl, rub my <laughs> belly, and don't eat me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rob, you have, a, you have an animal I, companion. I, I have a longtime dog owner. In fact, sadly, I, did, I lost my dog oh. three weeks ago. Aww. Very sad. Thanks yes. for bringing it up, Greg. Damn it. Ever, but the, o the only thing I hated was when people would say, so are you Illy's daddy? Oh. That's weird, and I don't like it. I know. My cat calls me mom. Absolutely. I don't like that. I don't like master, owner, yeah. guardian's fine. Anything but daddy. Yes, that's gross. That's gross. I also, but you know what? I have an animal companion, but he's Swedish. <laughs> Sven. I walk him in the park. Stop it. He likes the animals Stop a great leash. It. Oh, Stop yeah. it! As he had, as he had a shot. So oh, there we go. Okay. Right in the Stop belly it. button. Thanks for taking McDowell, Rob Long, Cat Tips, our studio audience. I'm Greg Kettle. I love you, America.